Today we've come to a place called Rainbow Beach to have a look at what might be living in this coastal environment. The first thing we came across was this copper-tailed skink. And these skinks grow to about 30 centimetres long and they'll eat all sorts of little creatures that live in the sand and the foresty environments. They're found all along Australia's east coast. And then we went down on the beach and decided to have a look at what could be living around these rocks. We had a look in this cave to see if there might be some creatures hidden in there. However, we were unsuccessful in finding any creatures around the rocks. But as we walked back to where the people were swimming, we saw some signs that definitely indicated there were some creatures about. And these are called blue bottles or Portuguese man of war. And the blue bottle jellyfish is actually a group of organisms that live together. There's hundreds of organisms that make up the stinging and mouth parts and they are responsible for bringing food up to the big creature that lives on top that fills up with gas when it eats and then it uses that gas to float along via the wind currents. Because of this, they're very vulnerable to getting washed onto beaches. And they got the name Portuguese Man of War because they sail along just like one of the Portuguese Man of War ships. And their sail looks very similar to a Portuguese Man of War's sail. And then we saw signs of another creature that lives in this environment. And it was a sand crab. And sand crabs are very wary, rightfully so, because they're prey for many birds that patrol this beach. Sand crabs cover their burrows with sand when the tide comes in, and then early in the morning when the tide's gone out, they'll throw the sand back out and start their day scavenging along the beach. We're here at low tide at a place called Inskip Point. This is a totally salt water area, so we're gonna see some totally new species here. Like, we've noticed that there's a lot of soldier crabs, so we'll try and see some of the soldier crabs in action. And we'll see what else is living in these cool little tide pools that have appeared when the tide's gone out. It's really warm in this water, so it'll be interesting to see what can tolerate this environment. We had a good look around the mangroves and there was lots and lots of signs of life. Straight away we saw these cool crabs that had made this mangrove their home. I'm currently sitting in what is basically an apartment complex for crabs. There are so many crabs hiding in this tree. And if we wait here long enough, hopefully they'll come out and we can see some of them. There's all different species of crabs. I've seen some red ones, some black ones even some sandy coloured crabs as well. I had to be very careful because the moment these crabs sensed movement, they went back into their apartment complex and hid within this mangrove tree. But we just got a glimpse of some of the ones that have made this their home. They were everywhere. And these crabs with a big claw are called fiddler crabs. And adult males have one small claw and one very large claw, which they use to impress ladies and fight rival males. Females, however, they just have two small claws. This is where the fiddler crab gets its name. When the big claw is being waved around, it looks as if the male crab is playing a fiddle. If I can remain still enough, we might be able to see some of these crabs coming out of their holes. You can see these crabs, they have one really large claw that's orange. And as long as you keep still enough, you'll be able to see these amazing crabs. They're very wary of any movement. Any movement spooks them and they'll go right back down their holes. Fiddler crabs feed by scraping the surface of sediment up in their small claws, transferring it to their mouth where their complex mouth parts 
sift out the organic matter. They then spit out a small pellet of clean sand. These pellets cover their territory by the time the tide comes in. Because males have only one small feeding claw, they feed at half the rate of the females. They therefore have to spend double the time feeding. Males wave their claw around to impress the lady crabs. And when the lady crab finds a male she likes the look of, she will go into his burrow, which the male then blocks the entrance with sand. They'll mate, and the next day the male leaves the burrow and reseals it. He'll wander off and find a new burrow. The female will stay there for two weeks, and then during a high tide, she will emerge and release the baby crabs into the water. Fiddlers are very active during low tides. There is some evidence that fiddler crabs with small claws will molt their shells more often in order to get a bigger claw. But this bigger claw isn't as good for fighting, but is much better for waving about. They are constantly busy waving, fighting, mating, feeding, or cleaning up around their burrows. They're also very wary of any movement because birds prey on these crabs. So anytime they're out in the open, they're vulnerable. So they never go that far away from their burrow. But that doesn't matter because there's plenty of food that gets collected around these mangrove shoots. This is a different species of crab. This crab has spent all morning cleaning little bits of food off the mangrove shoots. And they'll no doubt come back out when I leave them be. I have to stay really still and wait for quite a long time for the crabs to trust me enough to come out of their burrows. When you first glance at this place, you'd think there's nothing here. But staying still for five minutes, then the crabs start to emerge. And you can see just how big this male's claw is. It's enormous. And half of their body is covered in a nice shiny blue coloration. They're a very colorful crab ranging from that orangey pink claw to the dark blue to the bright blue and white on the back end of the crab. And then we saw another crustacean but this one carries its home around on its back. Which means it doesn't move very quickly, but it has the added bonus of protection wherever it goes. And I'm sure you've seen one of these creatures before, but this is a hermit crab. Look at this sweet little crab. They'll find the shells of old snails that have since died or been eaten and then they'll move in and make it their home. Look at this cool little guy we found. This is an Australian hermit crab and he's got a distinct blue pattern along his legs. An interesting thing with hermit crabs is that they carry their home around with them. And when they get too big, as you probably know, they go and find another shell. He's got those nice little feelers to tell if there's any prey or predators coming in front of him. And he can either strike at the prey or hide back in his shell when there's a predator. He obviously doesn't see me as a predator because as you can see, he's out of his shell And he's got those little eyes on, on the end of those eye stalks. He's also got little hairs all over his blue legs. It's probably time for him to go back in the water now so he can get on with his day. Well, he doesn't seem to be too bothered being on me. There you go. What a beautiful, peaceful creature. 
The hermit crabs will sift through the sand looking for little microorganisms and bits of other foods that they can pick up and eat. We also saw this cool snail. And then we went way out to where the water was to see if we could find any fish living in this environment. As you can see, the water's really shallow here. But despite how shallow the water was, there was plenty of fish swimming about. All the fish that we saw were this one species. They're a very active fish, and if we kick up the sand, the moment we'd move out of the area, all the fish would swarm in and try and eat little particles of food that have been kicked up from the sand. You can see them sifting through it with their mouths, and as they swim by really quickly, they actually kick up the sand themselves, and then the other fish will come along and eat bits of food. You can see these fish are having a go at my camera. They're investigating it to see if it's something they can eat. And we've seen these fish all throughout Southeast Queensland. They're a fairly common species. They're very fast moving, so it's hard to get a clear shot of them. But when they'd come up and investigate the camera, then we got a good look at the fish. They don't get very big. These ones are maybe half grown. Some of them were adults. They're not a particularly large species, but they swim in large schools. And they tend to hang around the coastal environments. When it's low tide, there's not many predators for these fish, so they feel safe to feed for as long as they can until the tide comes back in and the bigger fish make this their home. There's lots of mangroves behind me and the mangroves stop the tide coming in and washing away the sand that makes this landmass behind us. I think it's amazing the plants like this can exist in totally salt water with just sand below them to anchor themselves onto. Let's go and see if we can find some of the soldier crabs and other creatures living in this tidal zone. We've just found a really cool green sea worm. I hope this species isn't trying to bury into my hands, but as you can see, it does like to bury into the sand. And these sea worms will catch any sort of little microorganisms and little creatures living in the sand here. And they make a distinct line along the sand when they move. So you can tell there's been a sea worm because it'll look almost like a tiny little snake has slithered along the ground. They've got these tiny little legs all along them, kind of like a millipede, or at least they look like legs. I'll put this guy back in the water and he can get on with his day. Oh, he's excreting some kind of mucus. They must do that when they feel threatened, so I'll put him back. What beautiful creatures. There's various species of sea worm, and these guys are pretty common all throughout the east coast of Australia. We actually got lucky enough to see two of these sea worms and they possibly were in the middle of mating before we came along. But then we found something we had to go and investigate. We're at a place called Inskip Point and we have found thousands and thousands of these little crabs. They're called soldier crabs. And they're called soldier crabs because as you can see, they move like an army. And they have this beautiful blue coloration on their backs. You can see 
these sweet little creatures. They're almost like a spider. And when they feel threatened, they'll go into the sand, as you can see one's trying to do on my hand. Now he feels nice and safe there because he thinks nothing can see him. But we'll put him back so he can feel much safer in his natural environment. What an amazing creature. Isn't it amazing the way these crabs walk? Unlike most crabs which walk sideways, the soldier crabs move forwards. And they move in such great numbers, that's how they get the name soldier crabs. And soldier crabs are found from the Bay of Bengal near India all the way to Australia, growing to a maximum size of about 25 millimeters across. These beautiful blue crabs spend their day under the sand and then the rest of their time searching the sand for food. The soldier crabs emerge from the sand depending on temperature, wind and rainfall with some days only male crabs appearing. The next day may be a mix of male and female crabs. I waited for quite a while for all the crabs to emerge out of the sand in an area that I had just seen them all disappear into. It took me about 10 minutes of being really still for the crabs to not feel there was a threat around and start bubbling up out of the sand. You would not believe how many crabs were living in this small patch just a few meters across right in front of me. And they're going off to sift through the sand, leaving behind little balls of sand when they've removed any food that they find. They will eat all sorts of organic matter that's in the sand. When they emerge from the sand, you can see they clean the sand off themselves for a few seconds and then they're ready to go out and explore and try and find some food. It's just amazing how many of these crabs there were. There are so many of these crabs, we have to be really careful not to stand on them. They like to burrow into the sand when they feel threatened. As you can see, they've all dissipated from this area and gone down into the ground. They feel nice and safe under the ground, as you can see with this one. He's made his nice little home in this bit of sand. And they'll pop back out of the sand when they feel it's safe to do so. And there's so many of them, when they move across the sand, they sound almost like it's raining. They've got a very distinct blue coloration on their shell, and they've got these nice little red bands going across their legs. What an amazing creature. I'll put him back so he can have, have a nice safe little burrow down there in the sand. Like all the species of crab we've come across, the soldier crabs are very vulnerable to birds and any fish, which is why they spend a lot of their time under the sand and only emerge when they feel it's safe to do so. The soldier crabs have all gone back under the sand. As the tide comes in, they make their burrows and they'll hide until it's low tide again. And then they'll emerge and continue their journey of scavenging through this part of the ocean. And there was a pelican to pick off any fish that got trapped in the pools. What a great day we've had at Inskip Point. We saw soldier crabs and lots of different species of fish. And we also saw those crabs with a really big claw. We gotta go now, but we'll see you on our next adventure.